Hmm. And never give up because you will get there, definitely. And surround yourself with the right people. You'll definitely get there. Hello and welcome. Welcome back to another Traders Podcast episode. Sit back, grab a notepad and pen and take some notes. In today's episode, we have someone who has learned trading over the years and has recently gone full-time trading. He's also started his own education in terms of a course. I'm sure that there's going to be a few people out there that know him under the name of Zone Trader. Um, He learned his concepts from ICT. And in this episode, he's going to be sharing some of those insights over the years that he has learned with you guys. So I hope that you enjoy it. If you do, drop any questions or comments below. I'm sure he's going to be very, very happy to answer those for, for you guys. If you do enjoy it, remember to hit the like button and subscribe. We come out with podcasts almost every single Thursday. If you do enjoy these, remember to subscribe, turn the notifications on, come back every single week, and we should have a new trader who's willing to share their experiences with you. If there's any traders that you would like to see on the podcast, comment those guys below as well, and I'll see if we can get them on. Let's get into the podcast. Please welcome Simon. So for anyone that doesn't know who you are, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? Yes, Jacob. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for having me on the show. First thank of all. you for coming on. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Simon Davis, also known as Zone Trader. I've got a wife and two kids. Originally from the Wirral, over the water from Liverpool, moved to Manchester, to, well, near Manchester Bolton, to study graphic design. I like to keep things simple, everything simple in life. That's what I try and do. So I take the complex and make it simple. Um, I started trading four, four years ago. Um, I started with um, knowing about IML. Most people, some people take that route. Mm-hmm. Uh, before then, I was doing network marketing for five years, um, but I couldn't really get off the ground. So I moved into, into trading from that and then found IML. I wasn't in there long. Um, didn't really like the education in there. And my friend of mine introduced me to Inner Circle Trader, Michael J. Huddleston. He said, um, check him out instead of going through the IML route. I said, okay. Um, and he's been my foundation, really, for trading. Um, Michael J. Huddleston, Inner Circle Trader. Okay. That was four, four years ago I started. Um, and then I went through his free stuff twice and try to keep it simple and then we're here today really so, okay yeah, started so four years ago when you learn from ict um yes. how long does it take you to develop a strategy um well i literally went through all this free stuff for i'd say two and a half to three years um oh because he's had a lot of information yeah. and to put, to, I've bounced around from strategy to strategy, which is not a good idea, but um, it's needed really. You, you need to find, find your own path really is find your own feel of the market. So you get to find out what other people are doing and then try and mold your own together. Mm. So it suits your personality. Um, so I'd say, like two years to to actually nail something down and actually start using it properly okay and can you briefly describe that strategy that you're currently using um i have a few Mm -hmm. but the main one is i will determine the trend by using the uh, 10 and 20 ema on the daily um as a rough estimate of the direction of trend and then um the actual trades I take are order blocks, breakers, and turtle soups. Also, I've recently discovered convergence. Um, most people trade divergence, but I trade convergence, which is where the RSI goes the same way as price and not the opposite way like divergence does, mm. which really helps me. Um, so recently, I've added the RSI to what I've known from ICT and found my own flow from there. So, But order blocks and uh, breakers, turtle soups are, are really powerful. Um, setups in the market from from ICT. 
Yeah. Um, and when you were learning, obviously you mentioned that you were learning for um, like two or three years, I think, from ICT. Yes. Um, what did you find most difficult when learning how to trade? Um, inner work, really, because you can have all the strategies down and know them. But I always say um, four things. If you don't have the patience, discipline, the rule following skills and the risk management to actually trade the strategy, it's never going to work. So it's the inner work was, was the most tricky thing to, um, to pick up on in trading. Mm. Uh -huh. uh, so you can, you can know all the strategies and know your edge inside out, but if you've not got the patience to wait for that edge to come along and you just trade anything, and it's, when you trade when it's not your trade, um, it doesn't go well. It doesn't go well, so yeah. it's inner work. And how do you think people can develop that uh, discipline and patience? Uh, focusing really, try and try and only trade one pair, because then that will help you with patience. Because then your eyes are on everywhere looking for something and trying to actually get into the market. Because it's not about actually being in the market; it's about waiting for that setup that's gonna be um, be efficient and profitable instead of trying to just get into anything just because you're sitting at the charts. It's mm. it's a difficult thing to do. Is it's having patience to to wait for a trade yeah um so did i answer your question yeah 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 um i think that developing the discipline and the patience is is quite hard for a lot of traders mm -hmm. um i think it's almost something that you kind of have to do yourself almost um yes definitely nobody no book or anything can really teach you yeah um it's like yeah, going down to one pair is is really um, is really crucial in order to develop patience because then you're not looking around, like I said, and um, also only trading like a handful of setups. You could have like ten or five in your arsenal. I mean, most people won't, but um, if you've got a load of setups like five, just narrow it down to only focusing on two, because sometimes mm. they could also um, contradict each other. So that that doesn't really help when they contradict each other yeah so yeah keep your setups down and keep your uh, pairs down to a minimum yeah and have a set time to trade as well that helps yeah i think that does help open or, or new york mm -hmm. so do you do you have like any routines in place for when you're trading um they've changed many times over the years i've recently started trading nasdaq um so that's changed my routine altogether Mm. When trading Forex, I would wake up like an hour before going onto the charts because waking up just before trading is not a good idea. I just found out, uh, some most people will find that out, that just waking up is not good. When you've just woken up and get onto the charts, it's not good. So get yeah. up an hour before trading. And um good thing to do is read over, read over your plan and have your plan quite small, your trade plan, and read over it. Um that way and then it's fresh in your mind even though you know it off by heart it's best to get it fresh in your mind and then that helps with rule following because um i don't know whether you found out that when you trade in the market can manipulate it, you into moves that you never thought you would ever be in like yeah. if, you, if you're just watching the chart you could see something move fast and you think oh i'll buy into that but that's actually um trademark of ict the judas swing into an order block and people will buy into that and then it'll just drop. So it's not it's not a good thing. Yeah. Um so do you have like any advice for creating routines? Because obviously yours has had to change a lot. Um, yeah. Um, do you have any advice for traders? Yeah, wake up wake up before you're trading. So wake up an hour before you're trading and get fresh mind and also read your trade plan. Uh, have a trade plan, that's key. Hmm. Um, either written down or on computer and have it in front of you as well. Also, what could really help is a checklist like flying a plane because you've got, because trade, a, tr a trade is not just one action. It's, it, I, I say you should break it down into like objectives. 
So objective one, yeah, the trend's going the right way. Objective two, it's swung into your order, which is the order block or a breaker. Objective three would be like um, a break of structure before entry or a break of previous candle before entry. So then you've got more confirmations uh, and have a checklist and then yeah. have an actual checklist where you're checking stuff off before you actually take the trade a bit like breaking that trade into a mission into uh, from a mission to objectives. And then once all objectives have hit, then you enter a trade instead of just going into a trade. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's actually, I've not heard of anyone describe it that way. That's quite good. What does your average day look like then? Because I know that you uh, said that you teach people. Yes. Um, I'm mainly just, just a course. I used to do, okay. I do one-on-ones as well. Uh, after they finish the course as a bonus, I used to do one-on-ones more so, but these days I just do, um, courses, mm-hmm. but my day is, um, back when I used to trade Forex, I would wake up in the morning and, and do all the things that you need to do an hour before trading and then get on the charts. Then the thing is trading's it's patience, isn't it? So if your setup's not there, you've got to wait for that setup to become there. And yeah. it takes, it takes what a second to enter a trade. So once you're in the trade, make sure your stop losses are on. Um, not so much a take profit, uh, have an idea where it's going. Either the next high or the next low is a bet is a good target for target one. So your patience then, and the, you were saying about what's my day like. So, Basically, it takes a second to enter a trade. Yeah. And that's all That's all it takes is, is one second to enter that trade. So then you've got to... I've always said to people that trading is, is not so much the strategy, but what you do when you're not trading. So then you're not on the charts all the time because you don't have to be on the charts all the time. Yeah. Trading's about doing other things in life, what you want to do with your kids, your family, friends. Um, it's so much distracting yourself from actually trade over trading. So I play uh, PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So I'll put my trade on, have my stop loss on, and then I'll play PlayStation um, or do some housework or stuff like that. Pick up the kids from school. So it's so much about what you're doing away from the charts as well as being on the charts. If that makes sense. Yeah, and you mentioned um, a. That- the reason why um, trading is so good because we have free time. So yes. how would you define success as a trader? Definitely not about the money mm. um, because that's not the, the best goal to have is just for the money. Um, success as a trader is like um, SMB Capital say is it's having a, a, a trading um uh, it's actually by following your rules, uh, not entering trades you shouldn't be in, uh, sticking to bias, and having and, and aiming aiming for percentage growth, not not the monetary growth, is a good way. Mm. Um, so defining success success in trading would be consistency. Is is um is one way to start. It's one place to start is uh, consistency. Once you've hit consistency, it'd be more profitable. And not going for home runs, try and manage your risk by only risking one to two to three percent of your capital, depending on how much you've got in there. If you're trading a massive amount of money, like you would only trade like half a percent because it's more risky to do. So Yeah. But yeah, keeping your risk minimum and building your account gradually instead of just going for home runs. So what do you think is the most important personality trait? For a trader, I always say this: it's definitely patience. If you if you're not patient, because you can have the direction right, and if you enter a trade, and you have the direction right, you can still lose that trade because you're not in at the right time. So it's timing. So you've got to be patient to wait for the right timing. Like I said, you've got to break down your trades into like objectives, and if it's not hit all objectives, then don't enter a trade. Discipline. And the discipline is to follow your rules. If you're a rule breaker and you're going to break your rules willy nilly, never going to find consistency in trading. You need to have discipline in your trading. And definitely 
manage your risk. Yeah. Things so, I always say, or on every video, on the end of every video I make these days is them four key sh crucial things, patience, discipline, rule following, and manage your risk. Yeah. And what's a misconception that some people have about successful traders? Misconception that they can get rich quick because it's not really a get rich quick, especially if you have a small account. Even if yeah. you've got a large account, I suppose if you can't manage, manage a hundred pound account, you're never going to be able to manage a thousand or ten thousand pound account. People think if I've got more money in in the account, I'll make I'll make more money, but you can also lose more money faster as well. And greed will kick in faster if you're trading with more money as well. So greed's greed's a um, bad one that kicks in. And what would you say to anyone that says that they don't have time to trade or learn how to trade? Uh, I would put in the time to learn how to trade because it's a really beneficial skill to have, especially these days with all the jobs going down mm. in 2020. There are people losing their jobs left, right, and center. Technology is kicking in. Um, if you don't have time, well, you have, you've got time to trade. Once you know how to trade, you definitely have time to trade. If you want to trade to London or to New York, it doesn't require a lot of time to trade. Uh, you only have to be on the charts 10, 15, 20 to half an hour. Uh, you don't have to be on the charts long to find that trade if it's there. And if it's not there, go and do something else and come back. So for people who haven't got time to trade, um, I think that's just an excuse. Yeah. So, um, you've got plenty of time to trade because it doesn't take a long time. But the hardest part is finding someone with the right strategy um, and learning that strategy, trusting that strategy, and adapting it into what into your trading. I, it takes a while to to find to find a strategy that yeah. actually works. If if, the, if you've got a strategy, then you've got to trust the strategy uh, by back testing it. I say back test all the time, every day, because then you um, when you when you back test the strategy, you fire up your reticular activating system in the back of your mind. Uh, in your mind and um, then you, you will see the, the setup more often in forward data so you find it in previous data hundreds and hundreds of times and then it, it embeds it into the into your subconscious mind into your reticular activating system inside of your mind and it'll help you notice that that setup more in in um, future data in live data yeah so back test yeah and you mentioned that obviously you learn how to trade from free content. Yes. Um, and do you think that people should just go onto YouTube and search trading strategy, or do you think they should reach out to someone and use their strategy? Because um, it's kind of the thing of, do you look at a lot of different strategies and say, yeah, I like this one? Or is it you learn one and you stick with it? Good question. Yes, I think YouTube is good, um, and there's a lot of good psychology things on there as well, like trading in the zone, things like that. Mm. Um, and Desire to Trade's got good podcasts. You've got good podcasts. Uh, so, you. so on um, YouTube is good, but you can only get so far. No one's going to actually teach you exactly what you need to do. Um, I seen a quote the other day, which is a diff there's a difference between charting and trading. Like you can chart, but then trading is a different thing to charting, if you know what I mean. So you yeah. can draw all of your charts all you want and find setups all you want, but actually going forward in live data and trading is different. Um, having It depends how fast you want to get there, really. Um, it's worth paying money for education because they have the secrets, obviously, from viable sources with track records or people who have got your best interest at heart. Um, YouTube, you can get so far, but having a mentor, you'll get there a lot faster because they can teach you exactly what they know now. And then you can adapt that into your trading strategy or use their trading strategy and make it your own kind of, and then and then um, trade, trade going forward. So I, I do recommend seeking uh, mentors, definitely. I've had a few in my time. Okay, and what's like the best piece of advice that you've been given from a mentor? 
best piece of advice from a mentor? Inside or outside of trading? Was from was from ICT, one of them. And that was keep your purse down to a minimum because then you've got, because it helps you focus and it helps you with your patience and your discipline. So you're not looking elsewhere on other pairs for trades and it really helps you with your patience because you only need a few setups a week to, um, to make a good living from this mm. once you've built your account up. So the, the best advice was to keep my trading down to a minimum and not trade too many pairs. That helped. That really helped. Yeah. And what's the worst piece of advice? Worst piece of advice. I don't know. It, it was, it was, I, would, I wouldn't say I was given it, but the worst thing to do is strategy hop. So if something doesn't work, move on to the next. Strat, don't have strategy hop too much. Mm. Um, but I think it's the worst thing to do or to be told. But then it also helps you because then you know what not to do and what you don't want to do. And it's all about finding yourself, your personality of what you, what you can um, master. If you can master your patience, if you've got patience, you can trade the higher time frames. If you haven't got patience, trade the lower time frames, but have a bias in mind. So, yeah. Um, and obviously, you've mentioned ICT. Yes. Is there anyone inside or outside of trading that you look up to? Well, I've listened to Tony Robbins in the past, Jim Rohn in the past, um, Mark Douglas. Is uh, for trading. is a really good guy to look up to. Um, he's got a really good psychology based. Mm, yeah. Um, is it, I think it's Randy Howell. He's got a really good psychology because once you know your strategy in trading, you just need your inner work to be there, and then it will all come together in alignment, and then you will, can then become consistently profitable trader. So you need your inner work. So I focus on psychology mainly, and it'll be zone. Um, Mark Mark Douglas and Randy Howell. Okay. And yeah. Inner Circle Trader is definitely um, a guy I look up to as well. Yeah, we've had um, Randy Howell as a guest on the podcast. I've seen, um, yeah. It was really good. It was good to learn from him. Um, do you have one trade that stands out to you in a good or bad reason? I have a bad one. Um, okay. trade, trade in NASDAQ <laughs> my mentor said only buy and I sold therefore I didn't follow my rules and <laughs> got burnt. I got burnt by that so yeah nah, don't sell NASDAQ <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, do you have one piece of advice for a new trader yeah um, I'll start off with have patience discipline rule following and always manage your risk. And my, my main advice is go at your own pace. Don't look up to other people and think, I want to be there. Don't aim for the money. Don't like track your success by monetary value. Excuse me, track it by, by percentage growth. So if you can hit one to 2% a day profit, then that's brilliant and don't have really huge expectations in what you're going to be doing with your account mm. and never give up because you will get there definitely and surround yourself with the right people you definitely get there yeah um and obviously we've spoken a little bit about your course um yes. what made you actually create a course in the first place and uh zone trader um zone trader was at first just Basically, I was what I did was I'd watched ICT's videos, and instead of actually writing stuff down so much, I would I would then go back and just make a video on what I've just learned, and try to okay. keep it as simple as possible. So then I could use it for my own training. So that's what I did to begin with. So all my free content was basically what I what I was learning from ICT. I would just make a video um, of it, and then I'd go back and learn it myself from that video to make it simple for me to understand. That's quite good, um, because I Because ICT, he, he, talks, he talks a lot over the <laughs> charts. So um, I, 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 it's really useful, but if you want to get straight down to strategy, you've got to pull bits from there, pull bits from there. So when I yeah. 
it's like a, basically making a giant jigsaw puzzle. Um, you pull bits from everywhere on from this one trader and then create the, your plan. Uh, so what was the question again? Um, talking about zone trader and what made you actually create it. Oh yeah. So I started off doing that, and then I decided to. Um, I was getting a, I was getting a lot of interest in people saying thank you very much for what you're doing, and I thought well there's only I, I only keep back about ten percent of what I actually know for my for my students for my uh, course. Mm -hmm. So then I went and discovered that ten percent of what ICT doesn't teach. I then started making my own course, and also I just wanted to pe save people time and um an effort save people time so they don't have to go through all of ict stuff um i tried to make it quick and easy to access so that broke it down into this is an order block break it's all soup and a few extra moves convergences uh, and tried to keep it simple so the reason why i created my course was to save people time and keep keep the learning curve simple and straightforward straight to the point amazing um, so what's some non-conventional advice that you'd give to a trader that wants to succeed? Yeah, non-conventional advice I would give is don't let it take over your life too much uh, okay. because trading can absorb you and you can be absorbed in it and then forget about the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, actually focus on both aspects of your life and trading and don't just focus on, on making it in trading and don't don't hold yourself accountable for your life being successful on the basis of your trading account. Mm, I think that's hard for a lot of traders. Yeah, because you've got many other things to be happy and successful about. Uh, also, I need to cover um, trading and trading and probabilities. Instead of yeah. just focusing on that one trade, uh, or or focusing on it, focus on every trade individually. This is from Mark Douglas. Don't trade on. Don't focus on every trade individually, because then you're going to be like, if you win that trade, you're going to feel euphoria, and then you're going to risk too much next trade, and that will really harm your bottom line. Or if you lose that trade, you'll feel down and out and a bit upset that you didn't win that trade. If you focus on on every individual trade. And when you do that, you can't focus on the next trade. So the best thing to do is in your head or on a piece of paper or on your journal is group your trades into 10 or five, whichever you can cope with or more if you want. And ha trade in the sets of, in sets of five or 10 in probabilities. So then you, you're getting an overall percentage growth or percentage decline over a series of trades and not just at an individual trade. That'll keep you, that's trading in the zone by Mark Douglas, basically in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, then you're not focused on any, any individual one trade. You're focused on a set of trades and you feel much better trading that way. Because yeah. then if you lose two trades in a row, you're not going to feel down and out because you know that you've got the next seven trades to bring that back up anyway and always have a positive risk reward. Um, a good one to start with is th risk 30 pips to gain 60 or 90, 90 pips. Because if you have a positive risk reward at 30 to 90 pips, then in sets of 10, if you lose five and win five, then you'll still be 300 pips up. So if you're risking 30 pips to gain 90. Yeah. I and you're 150 good. pips up if you're gaining 60 pips every 30 pips you lose. So if you lose 30 pips, if so it's positive risk award, always have a positive risk award. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say? And also where can people find you? Uh, yeah, things I would like to say is never give up. Trading is, it, even though on the books it's easy, you click a button, you can make money or lose money. Um, it's really difficult. The inner work is is key. So always have patience, discipline, follow your rules, and manage your risk. And people can find me at Zone Trader on Instagram. Um, Super, thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming on to the podcast today. It's been great, thanks.